everyone, Sebastian here from Green Music Production and today I am comparing Cubase Pro to Nuendo. I've had a lot of questions about what are the different features that are exclusive to Nuendo. Is it worth upgrading? So I'll answer a bunch of those questions and showcase a lot of exclusive features that are in Nuendo. So if you like that kind of content, as usual, click the like button and subscribe. And before we start, let's talk a little bit about today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. With thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, video, freelancing, and obviously music. Whether it's music theory, learning an instrument, music production, even the music business, there's a ton of content on there. There's even specific things like how to make beats, how to design great synth sounds, or even Cubase specific videos. To give you an example, I've been following this class by Will Edwards called Wavetable Sound Design Strategy, and it's really insightful. It gives you a lot of tools to create better synth sounds. Now most classes are under 60 minutes with short lesson to fit any schedule. And you have access to thousands of classes for less than $10 a month if you take the annual subscription. So I'll leave a link in the description below. The first thousand people to use the link will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Make sure to check it out and keep learning. So the first feature I'm gonna show you that is exclusive to Nuendo is the ability to have two video tracks. Now here, as you can see, I am in Nuendo, I have two video tracks tracks and if I go in Cubase right now I have one video track and if I try to create another one the option is grayed out. So it's good to have the option to have video in a DW but if you need more than one video track you're gonna have to move to Nuendo. Now why is it useful to have two video tracks? Well, there's a feature that I really like called video cut detection in Nuendo. If you're working with videos, let's say you're working on either um, publicity or a movie or trailer, you know that it happens quite often that they send you a version, you do a music edit, sound design, a bunch of stuff, you have a bunch of files that are all synced to the video and then they send you an email saying, oh, well, we changed a couple of shots, we changed some stuff around, so could you adjust your mix to this new version? And it's a pain. <laughs> so uh, that feature allows you to analyze the video track and detect all the cuts in the video and then you can generate mark markers to where the cuts are. So that's really, really neat. If you go under project, there's an option called video cut detection panel here. So if you analyze the video, I'll just click analyze. Uh, before you click analyze, you can set the sensitivity. So usually 50% is really accurate. So I just did it. Once you scan it, you can take a look at the different cuts here in the timeline and you have the option to add markers. So I just detected it clicked on add markers and it created a marker track with the different cuts. Now it is super accurate in my case uh, because it just did one cut at the beginning, which is normal since it's the beginning of the video. Then the beginning of my intro, the end of my intro and the outro and the ending. So it's super accurate. But why this is useful, let's say you have your old video that you did the edit for right here and you have the newer version where they did a bunch of modification you have no idea where they are then you can detect those things on both version and you can enable the snap under event so you'll see exactly where the markers are so you'll see where they don't match and know that oh they did an edit there so they seem to have moved this section over here and then you can select all the audio events and move them and since you're snapping to events it will snap to the different markers that you have so you can easily select them from the first marker of the original video move them to the next one and it's going to snap to the marker where the cut is and you're going to be synced so that is really cool a big time saver but there's something even more powerful than that there's a feature called reconform in Nuendo and it's not in Cubase. What it does is if you have an EDL file, it's basically a text file containing all the edits that the video editor did. So you can ask them to send it to you. It's pretty straightforward. If they're working with any good software like Premiere, Final Cut, it's super easy to export an EDL file. So you ask for the EDL file of the original video and the newer one. Then you go under project and you have a feature called reconform. Now you just have to import the old video EDL file over here. 
And then you do the same thing with the new one. You click generate and it's going to generate what we call a change EDL. So it's basically all the changes between the two versions. So new window will know exactly where they cut some portion and move them around. And you can take a look at them over here to see that new window really was able to match the different cut using the EDL. And if everything works, you can click on start reconform and it will move all of your audio to match the change in the video. So it does it automatically for you. So this is a game changer for me. I work with videos a lot. So this is really, really useful. Now, the next feature that I want to talk about is the meat and potatoes uh, for Nuendo. And it's the ability to work with Dolby Atmos and complex uh, multi-channel settings. So uh, let's say I open the uh, audio connection output here. If I go under output in Nuendo, we can see that I can go uh, up to over here 7.1, but it goes even higher than that. Uh, we have support for a lot of different output configuration up to 22.2 speaker outputs. And it also supports RO3D, something that Cubase doesn't support. There's even more stuff like Cine and Music and different speaker configuration. So this is really, really powerful. If we go in Cubase, just to compare, I'll open the audio connection panel again, add a bus. So it supports 5.1 and a couple of configuration, but not a lot. I would say that if you're a professional working in post-production, you'll probably need to work with Nuendo um, for that specific reason. So it also now supports Dolby Atmos. You don't need any external hardware. Obviously you can import and export uh, ADM files, which is the Dolby Atmos file format. So you can import them and export them right into Nuendo. And you also have a renderer now, so you don't need an RMU or an external hardware. Uh, now, for those who don't know, if you wanted to do Dolby Atmos in the past, you had to buy an RMU. It's an, basically a computer that renders the Dolby Atmos format and it was super expensive. So now in Nuendo, we can do that inside of Nuendo without buying external hardware. So we have an ADM ordering Dolby Atmos, so I can add object and beds, and I can select if I want no renderer and do it in Nuendo, or if I have a renderer, I can always use my external renderer. So that's a good feature. Um, so as you probably saw, it also supports a lot more file types for importing and exporting. So we can import uh, AES31, uh, CSV markers, Q sheets, OMF and AF are included in Cubase Pro. So that's good. If you're working in video, that's always a good thing to have. And obviously ADM, so there's a lot more option here. We also have MXF uh, Innuendo. If we go in Cubase, just to compare, we only have OMF and AF. So that's pretty good, but still, you know, uh, Nuendo has a lot more option. Nuendo also has a base management plugin. The plugin is called Base Manager, and this is to simulate if you had a 5.1 system in your house, in your studio, you might not have base management on your subwoofer. So usually the subwoofer can cut some frequencies on your satellite speakers and stuff like that. But if you don't have that in your studio, you can use a plugin to do that in Nuendo so you have a good reference. Another big time saver uh, in Nuendo is a feature called Field Recorder Audio Import. So let's say you're working on a movie. They recorded a bunch of different microphones. They had lavalier microphone, some boom microphone, and the camera was capturing the original sound. But you also had a field recorder, and then you're trying to import all of those files, and they don't match. And it's a nightmare because you have a bunch of audio files, nothing matches. So this tool will help you match the synced audio with the video to the field recorder files that you have. So you can uh, try to find, uh, depending on the duration, the scene, the take, tape, the date recorded, the urgent time, or the prefix file name. So it will help you match all of those files automatically for you in Nuendo and sync them in your project. So that's a huge time saver. Now, if we go into something that is a bit more useful for musicians and other people that are working with vocals. Um, we have the Supervision plugin and it's basically a meter plugin with a lot of different options. It's super powerful. But one of those options is intelligibility in Nuendo. And what it does is it will detect if your voice is 
intelligible enough so you see in real time if it's problematic. So that's useful if you want to see if people will understand what you're saying clearly. So it's good obviously for working in mu movies, you have music in the background and sound effects. You can just press play, let's say I'll play it on that track. Illustration, design, video, freelancing and obviously music. So as you can see it was in the green pretty much the whole time but there's nothing playing in the background so it's super easy but it's useful if it, let's say in a song you want to see if your uh, vocals are intelligible then that's a really good tool to have. We also have loudness curves. This is a track that will draw a curve to let you know the loudness of your vocals or if you're of your old mix so you always know what part are quieter what part are louder so this is really useful so let me just press play i enabled the record on the loudness track and i'll press play this is for creative and curious people on topics including illustration design video freelancing and obviously music whether it's music theory, learning an instrument, music production, even the music business. So as you can see, I clearly see uh, the parts that are quieter, the parts that are louder, so I can easily edit the volume to make sure that it's as consistent as possible. And we also have the information right here, so it's always good to see every uh, details. Now, let's say you're mastering a song and you want it to be to a specific loudness. Uh, and you don't want it to peak as well. There's a feature in Nuendo when you export your audio mix down. We have a bunch of options that are not here in Cubase over here. And one of them is normalized to integrated loudness. Now you can choose an integrated loudness. So if let's say you want to upload it on YouTube, usually minus 13 of UFS is a good value and you want to make sure that it doesn't peak. So you set a max peak value. So it doesn't only work as a maximizer, but it detects the loudness and bring it to the exact loudness that you put there. And it makes sure that it doesn't peak as well. So this is really useful. Obviously, if you're working on movies or anything that goes on TV, uh, you have to respect broadcast standards. Usually it's minus 24 LUFS, depending on your region. You can set it here and Nuendo will do it automatically for you. So this is a game changer. Nuendo also has an ADR panel. I'm not going to go in depth in that feature but for those who don't know what ADR is it's basically if you worked on a movie uh, sometimes there's a lot of background noise and some takes are not usable so you have to re-record them in studio so before you get the actor in the studio you can identify all the scenes that needs to be re-recorded you put some loop markers here let's say this one I would like to have some text and then in your ADR panel uh, you can click on the different takes that you want and press record and it will jump around to the different takes you selected and on the video window you will basically see a guide that will let you know when to start saying your line so let's try it out people on topics including illustration design video so as you could see there was a pre-line and once the line reached the end you could see a bar at the bottom that let you know when you have to read your text another thing that is specific to nuendo uh, is that you can have sessions with sample rates that go up to 384 kilohertz now if we compare it to cubase uh, let's open the project setup. The sample rate goes up to 192 kilohertz. So you might be wondering why you would need to go up to 384 kilohertz. Well, if you're a sound designer, a lot of time we want to slow down specific sounds to get a really good effect, a slow motion effect. But when we do that, if the sample rate is too low, uh, it will sound bad and we'll lose a lot of details in the sound. So having higher sample rates is really good for that kind of stuff. But if you're just making music, you probably won't use that as much. Now, if you're working in video games, um, there are a bunch of really good features. I'm working in video games, so I switched to Nuendo mainly for those features. Uh, the first one is a small feature, but a really useful one. Let's say I'm working on this um, specific UI sound right here. Let me solo just those tracks. So let's listen to it first. 
So it's a basic UI sound that I design using multiple tracks, some pitch shift and some other processes. And let's say I want to reuse that in a future session and I'm thinking, well, I'm going to design more UI sound and I want to reuse some parts in the future, but I don't want to reopen that session or mess with finding the old session. You can select all of those clips. You go under file, export, and there's an option called clip package in Nuendo that is not in Cubase. You select the folder where you want to export it. I already have one, so I'll just override it. You put the name over here. I'll call it SFX UI click and you can rate it. So right here I have four stars. So I know that it's probably not my best uh, UI sound effects. Uh, so you can rate them and so you have an easier time finding them afterwards. You can put information and then you just export them. So let me click OK. I'll overwrite this one. And just like that, it exported my clip package. Now let's say in the future I'm working in a new session. Um, I'll, let's just pretend that this is a new session right here. And I want to re-import those uh, clips exactly like they were in my session. I can go under File, Import, Clip Package, and I go get my clip package. And Nuendo re-imported those clips respecting the length, the fades, and everything just like they were. So let's listen to those now and make sure they sound exactly the same. Yeah, it's exactly the same thing. So this is really useful if you're a sound designer because sometimes you design a lot of UI sounds. An amazing thing and one of the main reasons why I wanted to use Nuendo uh, is if you're using a middleware for video games called Wise, there's a really cool feature that connects both Nuendo and Wise, and it's called Game Audio Connect. So right here, I just opened the Game Audio Connect window. It is in project if you're looking for it. I enabled it. I have Wise uh, right here. So if I just put my cursor in Wise under the UI folder, because I want to add this UI uh, sound right here in Wise, usually I would have to export it, uh, name it, then re-import it into WISE and do a bunch of, you know, things to get it into WISE. But now, um, if I have this Game Audio Connect enable, I can either drag and drop specific events and it will bring them into WISE. So let's say I want to import those five events separately into WISE. I can drag them and bring them into my Game Audio Connect window. So as you can see, Wise imported those files directly under UI and it's asking me if I want them to be sound effects. So if I click import, they will, they will all be there automatically. Another cool thing is uh, it detects when you're exporting. So if I do a render of those five files so that they become one stereo file, Wise will detect it and it will be imported to the specific hierarchy. So that is really, really good. Uh, another cool thing is it goes both ways. Let's say I listen to this sound that I created a while ago. I don't like it. I want to tweak it. I can right click on it in Wise and click on Edit in Nuendo and it will open the exact session where that SFX was created. So it goes both way. It's super powerful. There's even more option if you're working with interactive music. But uh, if you're working on video games, sound design or music, I highly recommend you to take a look at this feature. A new window also allows you to rename events from a list. So let's say you you have a sound design documents where all of the SFX names that are going to be in the game are and you create a bunch of sounds but with random names you can import a text file or a CSV file and batch rename all of your events in Nuendo. So this is cool if you need that kind of stuff. Now Nuendo also have exclusive plugins for sound designers. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is a Doppler plugin. So let's say I want to use a Doppler on this small section right here. So I'll just apply on the, the event itself. So I press F7 to open my direct offline processing and I type in Doppler. So here's the Windows Doppler and it looks kind of complicated, but it's super simple. You have two modes. One of them is manual, so you can automate this knob right here as if you were doing a pass by. So you can press play and automate that. But the automatic mode, you can just set your start position where you want the Doppler to start. You click on start, so it's going to set the exact time and then the transition time. 
Then you set the uh, listener. So let's say I put it in the middle of the file and the end time. So after that, you can just press play and you'll hear that the different settings that I have here will be applied to the section that I selected. Design, video, freelancing, and obviously music. So this specific file is in mono, so you can you don't hear it going from left to right as if it was a pass by, but usually with a stereo file, it will work. And you can always tweak if you want more pitch shift to happen, the transition length, uh, the depth and the distance so how much the volume is ducking while going from left to right so it's super powerful but super simple to use and i really enjoy that plugin now another really cool feature um, if you're editing voiceovers or working with any voices in video games or movies you're probably going to have at some point to design some non-human characters now new window has a plugin to do that uh, usually people would use uh, popular tools like dehumanizer from krotos really good stuff uh, but it's really nice to have this plugin in new window so let's try a couple of presets just to show you how powerful this can be so let's start with a bug preset then on there there's even specific things like how to make beats how to design great sound sounds are even to my specific videos now most classes are under 16 minutes with short lesson to fit any schedule we have access to thousands of classes for less than ten dollars a month if you take the annual subscription so i'll leave the link in the description below make sure to check it out and keep learning Really cool stuff. Um, obviously, you can tweak everything like the detune, the formants, the spatial. You can blend some dry if you think that the wet is too intense. There's a lot of things you can do in that plugin. It's super powerful and it will save you a bunch, a lot of money um, because usually you'd have to buy an external plugin to do that. And these are pretty expensive. Um, now, the last plugin that I want to cover is called Randomizer. It's exclusive to Nuendo again. But this one, if you're a sound designer, you often have to create variations. So let's say this UI sound right here that we listened to earlier. I want to create three other variation. I would just duplicate this. Usually what you would do is you would tweak a bunch of things. You would change some files, some layers. You would pitch shift, change the frequencies, the timing and things like that. But in Nuendo, if I select all of my duplicates, press F7 to open the direct offline processing window and load the randomizer. It's super simple to use. You basically have four knobs going from zero to 10, depending on the intensity or the depth of the effect that you want to apply. But it can change the pitch, the impact, the timing, and the color. So right now I have a specific setting right here. Let's try it out and see what it will do. So if I click apply, it just applied to all of my duplicates. So let's play the original with the duplicates and you'll see what it did. Just like that, I have four variations and that was super fast and easy to do. So I'm really happy about that. I use that quite a lot. It's super nice to have that feature in Nuendo. So there's a lot more stuff that is exclusive to Nuendo, but as I previously said, I'll leave a link in the description to Steinberg website where you can see a bunch of things uh, that are different from Nuendo to Cubase. So if you need more info, check out the link in the description. And I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. As usual, see you in the next one. Bye, guys.